I had prepared this. This is I kind of modified this particular presentation here. This I had pr originally prepared for conservation districts and municipal municipal officials who attend recently attended our uh, 2010 um, maintenance workshop up in Erie as a kind of a primer for uh, those um, districts and municipalities that are currently or will soon be. Uh, affected uh, road wise have their infrastructure road infrastructure affected by uh, Marcellus shale development in their area and uh, some of the things they might want to consider some of the things that are going on today now Barry's Barry's title was uh, something about roads ground zero uh, Bradford County PA that type of thing and this this won't stray far from it because we're still talking about uh, ground zero this is the road the road uh, uh, impacts and issues uh, to talk about, and especially what I what we focus on are those tertiary uh, roads, um, not the state routes particularly, but the, those roads that are unpaved municipal roads managed by the local municipalities uh, with throughout the play. So um, that being said, this is a nice scene here. This is kind of what you might see right now if you were to uh, travel out uh, outside of town and get uh, up into Rush Township or uh, up into the northern part of Center County or down in here to Rothrock. Uh, this is kind of classically what we have envisioned when we talk about dirt and gravel roads in Pennsylvania and uh, you know anybody who's grown up here and and that type of thing. This is when you think about one of the roads you can go out and get on a drive this is probably what you're picturing okay. Now uh, I do this for all kinds of audiences and for those of you in the room who are not maybe from Pennsylvania or don't know your your Pennsylvania history that well you know, Pennsylvania is no stranger to oil and gas development. In fact, uh, the reality is that uh, we are the birthplace of commercial oil and gas uh, development, uh, which actually kicked off what is our, today's economy. Our petroleum economy based economy started about 150, a little over 150 years ago when this man, uh, Colonel Edwin Drake, drilled the first commercial oil well up near Titusville, Pennsylvania. And we've had continuous oil and gas development in this state since then. Now, just, that's just a little primer as to why you know, Pennsylvania has been a keystone as far as fossil fuels and oil and gas development uh, from, its, from the time that uh, we first settled here. Um, but what my talk here today is about rural roads and why, they are, why they're vital to this state, uh, the impacts that they have, their importance, and, uh, and then I'm going to branch out into a, the, this touch on a little program that we're uh, closely related with. And uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about how this gas development play interacts with these roads and, and what's going on out there. To begin with, these are the four largest industries. If you look at uh, the uh, auditors, uh, the, the state auditors, and how they break up uh, revenues coming into the state, these traditionally have been the four largest industries in Pennsylvania. Okay? Previously, forestry and agriculture were tied together as one. They were broken out uh, for whatever reason. I think my, my guess is so that uh, this industry of tourism would show a higher percentage of revenue coming to the state. But regardless of how you break it down, uh, these are the four main industries that really drive the economy in Pennsylvania. And uh, if you look closely, there's a, there's a common thread in all four of them. And at least in three of them, you, you also see a common thread. You look at it. These, the, a lot of this activity that's going on here occurs in the most rural parts of our state on uh, relatively undeveloped roads. Um, definitely a, ro a lot of roads that lack a hard top surface. And in addition, there's a lot of heavy hauling involved with this, uh, with this type of industrial development that we have going on here. And up here on the top, you see that we have about 12 and a half million residents in Pennsylvania. If you look at this figure, about one in four of our residents uses a dirt or gravel road every day to get back and forth to work or to get their resources out of the woods or uh, get their products to market. So um, these are vital transportation links, vital part of the, the state infrastructure uh, to keep the wheels of our economy turning. And now, uh, in addition, we've got a new giant here emerging on the horizon. It's really picking up. We're past uh, a lot of the exploratory phase of of uh, shale gas development here in the state and we're ramping up into the production phase. Um, if, if in fact, I don't know, I'm not personal friends with any of the auditors at the, uh, at the state level, but my guess is that definitely within uh, a lot of the counties within the Marcellus Shale play, uh, this is going to become the most vital, important uh, 
economic factor in driving their local economies and uh, may very well turn out to be the biggest uh, driver of the state economy here in the not too distant future. And the one thing about this industry here, it as well it relies heavily on these same rural uh, tertiary roads that the previous industries that have kept us going uh, do. And, 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 and almost more so to some, to some extent, we'll talk about that. So what are the effects of roads? First of all, I mean, from a social and economic access, uh, standpoint, you're looking at uh, this roads provide access to resources and markets uh, for economic development. They also provide uh, a link to our uh, social and community services, our homes, our churches, uh, which provide a, a community development or social development. So they're very, uh, they are very heavily a part of our socioeconomic development. Uh, and I would, I would argue that they are more so, even more important in a rural area than in, a, uh, in an urban area where a lot of those things, a lot of uh, services could be accessed by foot or public transportation. Um, some of the effects of roads beyond uh, socioeconomic are that, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this, a road placed on the landscape alters the natural drainage patterns, okay, and uh, usually it can concentrate water. And I talk about the word erosion. Uh, when I use the word erosion, you may as well supplement uh, the words excess erosion. Erosion is a, a natural process. Uh, it happens all the time. That's why these mountains around us right here aren't as big as the Alps or as, or as big as the Rockies. Um, but when I use the word erosion, you might as well supplement excess erosion in there. And this excess water washes away costly road material, destabilizes the road base, and transports more sediment and chemicals into the streams. This is why, this has been predominantly what the Center for Dirt and Gravel Roads has been uh, involved with in trying to lessen this impact right here over the years. So here's, here we are, we have a, a natural landscape that's out there. Uh, this is long before, uh, uh, I say, white man came on the scene. Uh, we have trees, maybe a, a meadow type situation. We have natural vegetation on a hillside. And what happens is when the rain falls from the sky, we get a, a natural drainage pattern, a more diffuse, dispersed drainage pattern going down across the slope. Some of it's going down, soaking in, hitting the water table, coming out as springs or seeps, and eventually winding up at surface springs or underground streams. <clears throat> First time you cut a road or a footpath or an ox path or anything across this landscape in order to get yourself uh, so that one leg doesn't have to be longer than the other or that your vehicle is riding level, you, you usually do a cast and throw type setup where you'll cut into a You'll cut into an upslope bank like that, cast off some material down below, and give yourself a, uh, a relatively level cartway or travelway. Pro problem with this situation is now this same diffuse sheet flow, you are required to manage that flow somehow to keep it off your road, to keep the ice off the road, to keep uh, the road from washing away uh, where concentrated flow comes. And basically, what you do is you set up a situation that's a lot like the gutter on your house. All right, and you'll have, a, you'll have to manage this water in an upslope ditch and uh, get it through that roadway somehow without taking it across the travelway. And this is tr traditionally done with culverts, sluice pipes, cross pipes, whatever you want to call them. Now what you've done is you've taken a diffuse uh, flow of water and you've concentrated it at certain points and you start to build that excess erosion I'm talking about. Compound that by climate. And why is that important in Pennsylvania? Well. A lot of sources are telling us, telling me out there in, in all my uh, studies that Pennsylvania is number one nationally in the number of freeze-thaw cycles that we experience annually. That is where we have a freeze of the, of the material, soils, uh, road surface material, whatever. Uh, that it freezes up and then consequently thaws. Uh, and this process really breaks down the, uh, the durable, uh, stable capacity of a roadway. How's that work? And, and why am I going over this? Because this is what really brought a lot of the road issues to limelight this last spring. About March 4th of this year, we had a, a major thaw across the northern tier of Pennsylvania where a lot of the activity was. And uh, I've been talking about this issue, uh, some of these issues since back in 2008. And uh, really, I don't think there was too much attention paid to some of this stuff until it actually occurred and people saw what some of the, uh, the effects could be. Typically what will start to happen is the, the soils down below there have a certain percentage of water. Sometimes it's, a, it's not that much, maybe a 20% water, but that water in there exposed to this cold air as it wicks through that surface starts to freeze. Okay, and then ice lenses in the soil start to form. 
these formation, these ice lenses have a capillary action and actually draw up more water from the, the, the water table below, actually saturating the soil below this even more. And then as they are exposed to that freezing temperatures, uh, more ice lenses form. And a lot of times what happens if you're a farmer, how many farmers do we have in here or former farmers? Okay, farmers uh, have a lot of trouble in the wintertime at times with uh, frost heave and how that tears up the roots of their alfalfa crops. A lot of them are very, they're very aware of this process, okay? But we get a thing called frost heave. It's a lot like when you stick an ice cube in your, in your uh, refrigerator, what happens to ice? Ice is interesting, when it freezes, it expands, okay? This expansion in here actually will push the surface of the road up. Uh, this is a lot of times where you start to form cracks in asphalt surfaces or it starts to break apart the stable, uh, compacted aggregate surfaces. Then, you know, winter goes on. The road's actually pretty hard. You know, you're driving on a big uh, piece of block ice. Pretty good. It usually has a pretty good supporting capacity. But then the warm air settles over top and just like the this actually f uh, freezes from the top down, it begins to thaw from the top down as well. And in a nutshell, when the road looks like this, for that period where there's still ice down near the frost line and, and water lays between, in the base here, between the ice and the road surface, it's essentially like, a, like trying to drive trucks over a waterbed, okay? And a lot of your damage, you know, we can see 90% of road damage that occurs throughout the year happened in a one or two day period during this free, this, this when we call it the frost coming out of the ground. How deep is that frost table? Frost table usually gets down about 40 to 42 inches here in Pennsylvania. You know, that's uh, so, you know, you're getting three to three and a half to four feet down total. And that'll be the last to thaw when as, as that, that uh, warm, uh, as the warm air is thawing the surface from the top down. So with that, a lot of the problems that we've seen in relation to Marcellus Shale is the fact that our roads here in Pennsylvania never were designed to handle the, the amount and especially the weight of traffic that we're seeing uh, that's required to support this industry. Uh, you'll hear terms like pie crust roads, paved cow paths, whatever you want to call them. Uh, a lot of our roads are simply a, have a slight surface material on the top. They're designed, they handle, typically handle small passenger cars, F-250 pickup trucks, that kind of thing fairly well. Uh, but the whole, the whole game changes when you get 80,000 pound water trucks on there. And, uh, and why is this a problem? Well, basically there's lots of things. We, we at the center tend to target the environmental impacts uh, when a road breaks down, but uh, you've got a host of problems here, a host of, of issues, okay? A lot of social, economic, environmental, and we look at these first responder issues. If a road breaks down under that type of situation and becomes, becomes impassable, which is actually what happens in a lot of cases, uh, then you're gonna have a lot of first responder issues. Somebody having a heart attack down that road. Uh, if you can't get the 18 wheelers through there, uh, you're gonna be have hard pressed to get an ambulance through there. Just general transit issues, people in the community trying to get back and forth to work, the grocery store, school buses, that thing. For the industry, it could be potential downtime, okay? Um, and there's a, lot, there's a lot at stake for the industry. There's a lot of money involved uh, that's got to being spent in rental rates on rigs and stuff like that, regardless of whether those trucks are sitting or you're actually moving forward in the process, all right? And overall, we found that this kind of, uh, that to patch this up and not address the situation kind of correctly uh, increases your maintenance costs over the long run. And the stream pollution issue, you say, well, what, what, what's that got to do with it? I mean, we're not really talking about surface drainage necessarily here. Um, what we've noted is when a road breaks down like that and ruts up and, and breaks apart, then the drainage structures that are in place oftentimes become dysfunctional. All right, they're not, uh, your, it, water will bypass outlets where it should be outleted off the road and then concentrations and velocities of water build up. And uh, that's all running downhill and your stream lays at the bottom of the hill. So, this becomes an issue as well. 